Hi everyone, back again with another vinyl record review. Uh, I'm going to go with the theme of XXX and today I'm going to do 17. Uh, again, uh, Empire Records and Bad Vibes Forever. This is his debut album. Um, it was pressed after he died. Uh, I'm pretty sure they might have done one pressing before he died, but this is a... Uh, Almost positive they pressed it after. At least they put the sticker on it. Says for the debut album from the late XXX Tentacion, featuring Jocelyn Flores. Um, all of his albums, his full length albums, have an intro where he just rants. I don't. Uh, when I listen to his albums, I always skip that part. Jocelyn Flores, depression, obsession, everyone dies in their nightmares, revenge, save me, dead inside. Fuck Love featuring Trippy Red, Carry On, Orlando, and Ayala. Um, now this album is his first concept album. Uh, it has a lot to do with like toxic relationships and getting out of them. Um, it's I almost want to say it's like an apology album for his domestic violence allegations. And take it out of the plastic and the value is now dropped by 50 percent um he named the album 17 because that was supposedly the worst year of his life um now, from what I know, he was he had already blown up once this album dropped. It was a very anticipated debut, and I had only heard "Look at Me" um, and seen his. I want to say I saw his XXL cipher at that point, and this album comes out. And my friend messages me and he said, my buddy Jake, he says, XXX Tentacion just dropped an album. It's complete garbage. Listen to it. And so I go in with very low expectations, expecting to hear garbage. And I didn't hate it. Like right away, I was like, I, it was different. It reminded me of like My Chemical Romance's first album. If that's where it's just like, not the whole album, but just like the acoustic songs, like the, the intro romance where it seems like the whole album is like a Spanish guitar ballad. And uh, the features are trippy red. And then he has uh, Shiloh Dynasty on a couple of songs. And if you don't know the sh story of Shiloh Dynasty, that's you just have to go research it for yourself. It's absolutely crazy. Um, I follow her on Instagram, multiple accounts that I believe are her, but like, no one really knows who she is. She, it was an anonymous Vine account that had like millions of followers and she never revealed her identity. She didn't want to be famous. This is pretty cool. So it comes with an insert. Um, okay, it actually does uh, Give Shiloh Dynasty credit. It says this composition contains elements from I Knew You So Well, written by Sierra Nicole Sims, PKA Shiloh Dynasty, published by Shiloh Dynasty, used by permission. Um, at, when this album came out, everyone thought Shiloh Dynasty was actually a guy because their videos were so anonymous. And uh, when people saw Sierra Nicole Sims, they kind of figured it out. And uh, the guy who produced this album his name on it anywhere. He, he basically uh, was the one who said that she gave him permission. So he like kind of confirmed that it was a she. What X did is he gave uh, the Vine account to his producer and says, I want these three Vines in the beats. Um, her Instagram, Shiloh Dynasty, is worth looking at. I mean, it, it's a really cool, like weird combination of ASMR and indie music. Uh, so let's Go ahead, without further ado, let's listen to 17. Jocelyn Forrest, Depression and Obsession, Everyone Dies in Their Nightmares and Revenge. I mean, I could listen to this whole thing all the way through multiple times. It's a beautiful vinyl. Um, 
side A. Side B. I don't know what the theme is. We're just going to start with side A. See if I can get right to Jocelyn. Actually, I kind of want to play Revenge or Depression and Obsession, actually, just because um, Jocelyn Flores, I feel like it's kind of played out. We've all heard it like a million times. And I think Revenge and Depression, Depression and Obsession actually do a better job of representing what this album is. My favorite part is that it has so much of X's actual handwriting on it and thing like, there's just a poem right here. Stay up just to see the sun come up. Patience only had to see my metaphors, my metamorphosis unfold. Before their very eyes, mine that is, I pray they don't see how honored and end to the relaying cycles of evil minds, but an assumption that evil is a man's perception who is right, living wrong, and cannot see their own reflection of the truth that is so vividly around him. This kid was nuts. I mean, I'm sure this has meaning to it. I can't understand it. Jossie was one of my favorite artists before he died, um, mostly because of his second album, uh, question mark. But once he died and I actually like, listened to this album in depth, and now I, I had already really liked uh, depression and obsession, revenge. But once he died and I actually heard some of the deep tracks, really changed my perception of him. Two. So I think I'm gonna go to the third song, which would be depression and obsession. Skip right to revenge. Uh, again, that's not really what you think of when you think of cloud rap, you know? I mean, here's Shiloh Dynasty's voice off of Everybody Dies in the Nightmares. But this album, I mean, it won R&B album of the year 2017 for BET. Um, it's, it, yeah, it's more of an R&B album than, a, than like a true hip-hop album. I mean, he doesn't really spit any bars uh, at all throughout the whole thing. I mean, there's a couple hot verses, but it's more like for the choruses, bridges, and acoustics of it. It's a very aesthetically pleasing album. I mean, it's I'd call it more ASMR and indie music than actual rap. Let's see if I can get Revenge to play. That's safe, man. Yeah, this is Revenge. My first notice is that, well, most rap music wouldn't, like, it's not supposed to be played on vinyl, it's supposed to be digital. This whole album really is, like, it really is meant to be played on a vinyl record player, like, none of these songs are heavily bass boosted or distorted, like, look at me, or nothing is super heavily engineered. A lot of it's just, like, a three-piece band, maybe an acoustic guitar and X, and that's it. It's a really interesting project. Um, so 
So what I want to do now is I'm going to flip around to side B. And I'm going to try to play Orlando. That's a pretty important song to me. Now, that song Revenge, uh, when he got knocked out by Rob Stone's gang, I remember going on uh, SoundCloud or Spotify the next day and seeing Revenge and uh, thinking, weird. Like, I just thought it was weird because all I had heard was look at me. I didn't expect this kid to be like a real musician, you know. I didn't expect actual, like, lyrical content that would make you think. Um, Orlando is written about when he was in the Orlando jail. He, the Pulse, the Pulse nightclub shooting happened while he was locked up. And I think he also found out that his girlfriend at the time was cheating on him. So he was in jail and if he knew X in jail, he wanted, he was trapped inside of his own mind. He made sure he was very big in like astral projections. He, he meditated a lot. He really tried to stay inside of his mind and not let outside influence bother him. So when he finds out his girlfriend's cheating on him and finds out that two blocks away from the jail, uh, one of the worst shootings in US history happened. And I remember I went to visit Pulse Nightclub a few months ago with my girlfriend. We we listened to Orlando when we were leaving. And I mean, it's just shook. Like, I have to find. This is Carry On, but it might be the end of it. Yes, that was the outro. So Orlando is going to be the third song. Here we go. And this kid was incredibly disturbed, I mean. This whole album is basically like a why am I still alive album. Like, I don't deserve to be alive anymore. He was really introspective. He knew that he had made a bunch of mistakes and he was doing his best to try to rectify them. Might not be the right word. So relative to Revenge, uh, the mixtape, this album sounds much better. But it I, it was actually like professionally produced by a record label. It wasn't like a X reached out to some like random third party to produce his vinyl. This was a uh, an effort by Empire Records. Yeah, this this album's absolutely amazing. Um, right at nine point three. The only reason I'm gonna get knock off, I'm gonna knock off some points off every one of X's albums because of his damn intros where he wants to like tell you how to think. Maybe if I was younger I'd think it was cool, but I'm old so I think it's cheesy. But yeah, this album, if you own vinyl and you for the experience of listening to it, this album sounds better on vinyl than it will on digital, which I don't think is gonna be the case with all of X's albums. So yeah, that's review. Um, thanks guys. Like, comment, subscribe.